Hi guys, it's Jackie with Famish Farm and this video was taped a few days before Valentine's Day, I believe. But I came down with COVID, so I have not been able to do anything for a couple weeks. But today, it's going to be, this day, it's going to be in the mid-60s weather-wise, so perfect to get out and start working on the straw bales. The plan is to basically get the bales into the place that they'll remain in for the duration of this garden season. We've just kind of been moving them around while we figure out where we want the raised beds to go. And I kind of get diverted here on these last two bales that I'm looking at here. There's some mushrooms and uh, oat sprouting in them. And I don't need at this point to really be doing this and so i finally figure that out and these couple of bales right here are, have been in the yard since november of neighbor gave them to us after she finished with her halloween display so the plan is figure out where i'm gonna start the bales and then get cardboard underneath them just so i don't have to worry about weeding in between the bales and where they're going to be butted up against the raised garden beds. Now, typically when I bring out cardboard to the garden, I've already taken the, um, the tape and the labels and everything off the boxes. But I notice on these couple of boxes, I have not done that yet. So that's kind of a bummer to have to take a couple minutes and, and remove the packing tape. But you know, that's the way it goes in the garden some sometimes. And I'm just grateful to have 60 degree plus weather to be outside um, moving these around. So as I'm budding this up against the raised bed planters, I see that there's a little area that a couple smaller pieces of cardboard will be helpful. So I take a trip over to our cardboard storage come back with a couple smaller pieces of cardboard that will fit really nicely in between those raised garden blocks. And I've got three areas where I'll have to kind of do that fitting in process, which is fine. Anything that saves me weeding, I like. So I'm happy, happy, happy to do that. So for the most part, uh, this is a this part of the operation, I know where six of the bales are going to go. So it's basically just creating the, the nice um, flat cardboard surface for them to go on and then get those bales moved into place. Since I've been laid up for the couple of weeks now, I've got an idea that I'm going to put um, a small run of chicken wire or hardware cloth around this six bale line. And that's just to keep them uh, toward the end of the season. They do kind of collapse a little bit. And so that'll keep them more upright so I can plant up to the edges better. And then here I am... Um, finding the pieces of cardboard that require me to take the tape off. So I'm going to sit and do that for, it'll take a couple of seconds here. The bales that I'm placing right now, these first two bales are going to be where to the back side are going to be where my tomatoes are. So I'll have um, two large slicing tomato plants and then four Roma tomatoes is the plan and I think that should be plenty for Rod and I and our what we need during the year and my plan was to put some leaf lettuces toward the front of those and again as I've been laid up with COVID I've had lots of ideas about my beds and all so the raised beds the first two are going to be completely filled with compost leaf mold and such and that's a good area for anything that i'm going to 
sow directly into the garden instead of putting plants into the, the straw bales. So I kind of had that realization as I was working away. And then, um, and the, the reason is if you plant starts directly into the bales, you don't need any um, seed starter or potting soil, any type of compost on top of the bales to get them started, which is a nice thing. Whereas if I'm going to seed direct sow plants or seeds rather, then I need soil. And so you would have to add that to the top of the bales. And since I'm not looking to do that, I might as well not do that. I'll have two beds, actually three beds that are ready to plant with soil. And as I add more bales to the back side, these last few bales are gonna be um, my tall crops. So cucumbers, pole beans, and my snow peas. And what I, I've been kind of investigating different ways to fill those or to trellis those. And last year I used uh, tomato cages and the straw bale books idea on how to use uh, the green garden stakes, the tea stakes with some wire across. They just were not tall enough for my indeterminate tomatoes. So I'm exploring other options and I'll have to link in the description, but this cute little gal out, I think she's out in California, um, was using things that you would find in the concrete department. Um, I think it's called hardware. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. It's the reinforcing, the like the reinforcing metal um, pieces that you would use for concrete, like driveways and that kind of thing. And some of those things are, anything steel right now, of course, is really pricey. So I'm happy to find something that I can use that will be a little more affordable. And so I don't think they'll be permanent options, but they'll be something that will be effective and cost efficient right now. So one of the ideas I had was to use my extra bales in my raised garden beds on top of my the limbs and branches that I had put in last time. And unfortunately, the bale, fortunately, unfortunately, fortunately, the bales are bigger this year, so they're not gonna fit with my existing planters. So I kind of do a plan B on that. And here you'll see me, I'm dragging some of the cardboard that I'd previously used um, in the garden at the end of the season just to cover up some grass that was encroaching. And I'm going to reuse that again in the walkways where the, uh, the raised beds were previously. So looking at my garden plan in front of the tall crops, the peas, pole beans, and cucumbers, I plan on doing just a few sweet peppers and some Anaheim hot peppers or hot to me. We don't like really super hot things, so they'll be perfect for Rod and I. Um, we do enjoy stuffed peppers made with poblanos or Anaheims. Oh, and in front of the pole beans, I had slotted in to put a couple of the contender bush beans in front of the pole beans. We'll see how that works. And as I move the camera over here, the thing I need to remember is I've got two blueberries that are to the right of where I'm working right now. And those were the blueberry plants that I put in last year, but they were completely shaded by my mammoth tomato plants that took over the uh, middle row and the back row of last year's raised beds. So I'm just looking for ideas on how to make sure that I don't um, shade those out too much this year and also that I don't walk on them because they're so tiny they're easy to to step on. So since COVID of course I've come up with an idea that 
the bales that I'm moving to this portion of the garden right here, I'm going to put those to the back so they'll be between the blueberries and the fence and just have like a mini row back there of uh, additional planting that, you know, maybe I'll put some, it'll be the the sweet corn will be in the ground where the, those bales are right now. And so something up on the bales toward the back, maybe I can plant the gourds that I hope to plant, but we'll see how that goes. So now I've repositioned the camera again, and you can see where I've kind of torn apart that middle planter, uh, trying to fit the straw bales in. So I'm just gonna get that planter back together. And if you'll remember from before, the bottoms of the planters have, uh, say, up to two or three inch um, branches, dead, uh, pretty dead branches in them. And then I've covered them last time with some of my leaf mold that I've got that's uh, from two summers ago, two falls ago. So once those blocks are back in place and I've got the wood um, all nicely in there so it will stay, um, I, I will kind of pan the camera around so you can see the six bales that are in place with the cardboard down and kind of what that looks like for my back row of tomatoes, cucumbers, peas, and pole beans. So I'll kind of pan around so you can see where my blueberries are. Those are the two scrawny ones that were planted last year and didn't get enough sun. And then these are the existing ones. And do you notice some of those stalks are coming up? They're growing straight up and down. They just, that just started happening last year. Are those going to produce anything, I wonder? Does anybody know? So just kind of panning around here, I'll show you right there. You can see the cabbages that overwintered that I have done absolutely nothing to. We'll see if we get anything. And then we're going to start filling these two beds. And we'll move the camera over to my compost and leaf mold area. And now this compost area is directly below a very mature sweet gum tree that unfortunately sheds branches constantly. So I'm always picking through to get the bigger branches out of my compost. Does anybody, does anybody else have that problem and how have you solved it? Um, it's really annoying. Maybe I can put some net or something up above, I don't know, what would last and do an effective job of keeping those branches out of there. So as I'm loading up the compost, um, I just realized I did not film or I lost the footage of filling those two planters up with what's remaining of my leaf mold that's from two falls ago. Uh, this compost is also two years old. I've just been um, adding to it and flipping it every so often for the last two years. So this is really wonderful compost to add to these raised garden beds. And now the weather is getting warmer, so it's getting into the upper 60s. So time to take an out, another layer off. But as you'll see, I'm still having to pull out more and more branches, arg. So what am I gonna put in these two boxes with this wonderful compost? Well, I'm going to direct seed things is the new plan, but originally I had planned to put some full head lettuce, both romaine and iceberg, some carrots, some squash, some radishes, um, my peanuts, and then some beans that I'll dry, both kidney and black beans. Um, but that's kind of up for debate right now because I need to take a look at what I need to direct sow and what there will be 
room for in those two boxes that I can direct sew. So stay tuned for that. And I just have to wonder if I'm ever going to get all the branches out of this compost, which is sad, <laughs> but it is what it is. So um, as I move through finishing these two end raised gardens, then I'm going to come back to the first raised bed, which is the full of the second generation straw that I used in last garden, last summer's garden. And I'm just gonna put a top dressing of compost on those bales so I can either seed in those or sow plants, whatever I decide to uh, end up doing with the bales. And then here's those poor little cabbage plants that I have done nothing with since the fall haven't fed them, haven't watered them, and the bales are really decomposing very nicely around them. So it's great, a great growing medium. Um, but what I'm gonna end up doing, and I have not done that thus far, but I'm going to put some, again, some chicken wire or hardware cloth around this remaining bale that's just kind of in pretty bad shape and see if I can nurse. There's four of the six cabbages um, that are still alive. Um, one of, a couple of them are pretty healthy, a couple of them are sickly, but we'll see if we can get those to uh, produce. And then I've got this last part of the wheelbarrow full of compost, so of my strawberry plants that I had originally planted eight plants each year. Um, I, not very many of them have survived this season. I did not mulch them. We got below freezing. I think we were minus seven at the coldest. And so these guys really had to fend for themselves. And we'll see what comes up, but we'll give them a nice top coating of this great compost and see what happens. So this is our the next day and I've decided to take some of my old planters with some soil compost, potting soil. I have no idea really what this was. It sat the entire year with nothing in it. And then up on the table there, this is kind of my lettuce growing area, I've got a couple remaining little romaine, well, actually I think they're curly kale and those that are surviving on neglect somehow. <laughs> and we'll take all of the soil out and we'll replenish it with compost. And the plan is the first watering before I start um, planting is to, I saw somebody that use a little bit of dish soap in their water for the first watering um, when you're taking soil that's been compacted and you're trying to rejuvenate it. Well, I'm, that's what I'm gonna do is use some dish soap in the water and give all four of these planters a good soaking. And I am kind of extending um, my lettuce growing a bit. I generally go um, for just baby lettuces for our salads that we have every day. And I have never been able to grow enough that I completely eliminate buying lettuce, but I would like to get to that point where I can just grow my own lettuce during the, the summer especially. This little potting table we put up when we first moved into the house and it kind of is a great place for growing lettuces in the hot Alabama summer. Um, it faces east, so by you know noon, one o'clock, there's no afternoon sun. So it kind of gets a rest. It gets plenty of morning sunshine and for growing baby lettuces, that seems to be a pretty good um, place to do it. Now, this is, you can tell I've 
I think I've finally emptied all of my these two kind of lime green buckets and the compost and added a little bit of water and that was mainly to help get some of the clumps uh, taken care of and next we're going to start with these big planters bigger planters they're about three times the size of the little lime green ones and we're going to do the same thing we're going to take the soil add it to that compost and just uh, rejuvenate rejuvenate it and get it ready to for the growing season which i will start planting those i, I could do it any time um, it's a small enough area if I needed to protect it from a frost I could easily do that but we'll start doing that here in the next hopefully in the next week or so so as I dump out the second planter I discover that it has some clay in the bottom I must have been short some potting mix when I filled up the second planter so I'm kind of going to separate that out and use that for I've got several pots that I'll just put some annuals in and um, amend that with a uh, fresh potting mix and kind of handle that that way but here you can see that it's just more red clay than I want in my lettuce mix for this year so you'll notice my little concrete pagoda and that is something that i we carried from illinois with us that was in our yard up in illinois and i just love it it breaks down into three pieces even though it breaks down it's still very heavy and we were probably foolish to move it ourselves again but i love it and at some point we are going to make a water garden um, or a little pond or something, a water feature of some sort. And I would like it to have the, um, the kind of an Asian theme to it. So that will become part of that. But for now, it kind of sits on top of our grease trap, which is, you can see just a little bit of green on the bottom below the pagoda. And that is a the plastic cover for the grease trap. And so now I'm finally to the cleanup stage of this operation. And uh, luckily with that tarp, that made it very easy. And I'll come back. I've got, I think I'm gonna, yep, I've been to lunch. I come back and I decide to finally get these planters all stabilized. So in the center of the two courses of raised garden bed rocks or blocks if you will there's room for a section of rebar to be pounded in so that's what i'm doing here with my sledgehammer and you may be wondering what the heck is going on with the sledgehammer that is a old piece of fabric that we used for a project a million years ago um, it's been on that sledgehammer for probably 10 years. It's taped on. It needs to be removed, but we just haven't done it yet. So it kind of does muffle the sound as you're pounding things in, which is probably a good thing, but it really needs to be removed. It looks ridiculous. But these all go in pretty easily. No major, I think... This ground has not got any rocks or anything in it, so or very few, I guess I should say. There's rocks all over the place, but probably few. So that kind of finishes up two days of my garden plan execution. Thanks for watching, and come back another time and visit.